Cue the brand building, high tech, logo enhancing intro. Here comes uh, wind off the mountains. Yeah, it's a business card intro. 100% made in the USA. Silver Stag making another appearance in TMP. Man, I like Silver Stag knives so much. I'm even going to put their freaking business card on the table. There's all their contact information right there. Their website is silverstag.com. You guessed it. The main reason I love Silver Stag is because their amazing quality to value ratio. I reviewed this knife. Where is it? In 2013. This one, the Cascade Skinner. Whip sound. I gave this to my friend Darren. He is a big hunter in Washington State. He skinned with this one. Absolutely loved it. I think I talked about it in that review. He did a crappy job giving me pictures and video that I could have rolled into that KRV. Whatevs. But that was 2013. Their quality to value ratio, what you get with a silver stag knife, off the charts. Now, I hope this video, by the way, given the content, that is a traditional, more or less hunting knife, will be more popular than I think it will be with you guys. Some of those knives I told you about in storage kind of like this one. They're traditional. They're not tactical. They're kind of hunting knives. And I have been very disappointed with the view numbers on videos like that. Like, ah, guys aren't digging the hunting knives. They aren't. I love them. I think they're cool, even though I'm really not big game hunting right now. I'll talk a little bit more about that. But number one reason I love it, what you're getting. And I'll hammer that home throughout the entire video. Guys who already own Silver Stag knives will tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Go to any online review, like in the comment section of any retailer that sells them. You'll see guys raving about them. They're just that awesome. Another reason I like it, more insight to the show, is because Silver Stag actually dropped me a thank you note to the P.O. Box and said, Hey, dude, 2013 review, thanks so much for talking about us. We appreciate it. Cool. You know, I'm giving them access to a 500,000 person subscriber base, subscriber base free of charge. Thank you note is appropriate. I don't ask for anything in return. I don't ask for free knives, free anything, money, maybe other gun tubers and knife tubers and YouTube do. I don't. I mean, every knife I'm throwing on the table, we bought. And that means I got to review it. <laughs> We've put money into it. And some of these are going to go up for sale in my web store to make room for, yeah, you guessed it, more knives going into storage. I'm going to give you a six for one review right here for Silver Stag. Most of these knives have been with us since 2011, 2010 timeframe, a long time. Finally making it to tabletop review. You know, and honestly, getting the thank you note from Silver Stag, I think it was last summer, I was like, I put it in my mind again. I was like, hey man, they liked it. Cool, who do you think's gonna get, you know, the priority now? You know, Bark River, never heard from them. Anza, never heard from them. Knives of Alaska, never heard boo from them. Still like their knives, but nah, Silver Stag, come on down, dude. This one's called the. Hope I get these names right. Let me start with this one. This is the Deep Valley. No whip sound for that one. Okay, we'll talk about the sheaths briefly. It's kind of a buoy knife, not full tang. We'll talk about that. Good looking blade. Looks pretty much like a buck knife, right? The sh shape of it. A lot of these knives kind of follow each other, you know, in their lines. This one is the Slab Series. It's called the Sidekick Pro. Conveniently labeled so I don't forget about it. Hmm. That is a strong blade. Obviously full tank. Slab sided, pinned handles, some finger grooves in that blade. Cool knife. I really love this one. This is a Mountain Edge. Whip sound for that one. Oh, that's a cool knife. Very functional. Big old comfortable handle. The ergos on most of these knives are just really excellent. And I think this is called the Sharp Forest. I think so. This one right there. Boop. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to show you the sixth one yet. Keep watching. It's going to put it over the top, though. I'll tell you that much right now. But philosophy of use. Hunting knives, primarily. Not exclusively but primarily. That's what they're designed for. Check out this super cool catalog they're putting together. Silver Stack. I like that. 
very cool. They go in depth on their production processes. American Craftsman using American 1095 American D2 high quality steel. Heat treated properly. Each one hand ground, hollow ground. They introduce new models here and there as they go along. There's a D2 crown series. Named crown because they're using a crown of the stag. Deer antler, which they go and collect. There's a picture of that in here too. Right there. Check that out. Damascus series. You can read about the steels they use there or right here in the catalog or go to their website. Silverstag.com. Tool steel series. This uses a high quality and much beloved by myself 1095 steel. Like they're saying there, a cutlery spring steel. It's tough. You can just bang on it all day long. Works great. All of these steels will rust, of course. We know that. Remember what the knife you just saw there? We'll see it again. There's that deep valley. Slab series is the full tang version. Pocket series. They're actually making folding knives, too. I think they're adding to that lineup, too. Notch folders, uh, small and large lockbacks right there. Okay, hunting. But it goes beyond that. I think what you're seeing here is a collectible knife. Especially given the source. You know, an American produced by an American craftsman. Collectible knife. There's their guarantee right there. Collectability. Guys will just like holding them, you know, and hanging out with them. They're cool. Hunting, absolutely. We proved it with a Cascade Skinner. I think the best hunting knives, and these are some of my favorite models on the table. That's why we purchased them with the ad money here in TMP. Is I love the belly on this one. Beautiful. The Sharp Forest. Actually, the Sharp Forest is this one. I'm probably getting all confused. The Mountain Edge is this one. That one has belly. It's probably a little bit big to cape and skin for me. I'd want something smaller. I grew up a hunter. You guys know that. Spent a lot of time skinning, caping, deer, elk. That one's good. I think the Cascade Center is really nice. Uh, there's all kinds of great skinning tools you know replaceable blade ones but for a guy that really wants something traditional hand me down heirloom quality that you can give to your children and say hey you know this is the one i skinned that moose out with in on that hunt in alaska uh, that's pretty cool you know hey that's dad's sharp forest and the d2 steel that these use it'll last the test of time razor sharp out of box I can put a little better edge on it with my Edge Pro Apex. I did it with this Cascade Skinner, and it's still freaking sharp. That's what Darren told me. He's like, dude, I mean, we, I sent some other knives along with them, kind of like, I uh, had it on the table here. I don't know if it's a competitive option. It's just an option. Sog Woodline, small. I think I showed that in the Cascade review. Still coated in elk blood. He said, yeah, it's okay. This is 8CR13 MOV. And he goes, yeah, it's okay. We had to touch it up a bit. And he didn't really, you know, for, for what he was doing, he didn't like the blade shape. But I'll tell you what, I mean, it doesn't, I don't think that 8CR compares to this American made D2 in edge holding. What did they say in their catalog? I won't look for it for airtime reasons, but they said they can skin out five wild boar without touching up or resharpening. I have no doubt about that at all. How about camp knives? Overall knives you take with you camping, just doing whatever, food prep, slicing tomatoes, spreading peanut butter. Totally. Obviously some blades will be better than others. I'm talking shapes, shapes and stuff. As far as hardcore wilderness use goes, uh, here comes uh, our testing coming in to the tabletop review. Be careful. These are not full tang knives. These are half tang, rat tail. So they go right about here. They kind of have to because you have a curvature with a natural stag that they collect. So they can't be full tang, obviously. They're going to come up here. In some versions, they're going to be pinned and epoxied to the handle. And they're pretty strong. They aren't, you know, batoning strong, though. And uh, <clears throat> I found out with this one. The Deep Valley. I think that's the name of this one. So Tactical Doodle and myself, we go on a backpack adventure. I take the previous version of this, and I figured, ah, I kind of have a suspicion this is going to break, but I want to find out. And I broke it. <laughs> if I find the video, I'll show you. It was as expected. I, I kind of knew it would, and it was in summertime. It wasn't even cold out. Point being, they're not strong enough to baton with, but they're not really made, made for that. This one here, coming out of the Slab series, 
this is a Sidekick Pro SK6 six inch blade. That can do it, right? Made of D2 though, I think it would do fine. I didn't really hard test this one. But if you want a strong knife out of the Silver Stag lineup, go with the Slab Series. So those won't be a problem. I don't know if I totally dig finger grooves on any knife. These are okay. But if I'm batoning, all finger grooves do is they kind of batter my fingers, right? The boom, boom, boom. I don't like this portion here at the end of the tang, and I don't like finger grooves if I'm batoning. This really is kind of a medium-sized knife. Just like I said, just like a buck knife or a K-bar. Same philosophy of use. Could you, speaking of which, could you fight with that one? I don't know. Do you, you tell me. You got some gimping on the top. You know, a deep guard here. Finger choil right there. Finger grooves. You tell me. It wouldn't be my first choice. No. Uh, these, and I don't know. They're really not designed for that. You know that. They're skinny knives. They're outdoor knives. But worst comes worst, could you? Yeah. I'd probably go with a deep valley after that. Just for its reach. But check this one out. Here comes number six blade. And I got to tell you, I'm very excited about it. It's been in our project for a long time. And I actually sent it to Ben Dale from Edge Pro Incorporated up at Hood River. Check out the shipment date on it. This is us sending it up to him. Why? Because he will sharpen your knife free of charge. And I sent him this huge silver stag. Drum roll, please. 10 inch large Bowie knife to sharpen. Not that it sucked out of box. It was good out of box. It rocked. But I knew Ben could do better, and sure enough, he put this on the Edge Pro. What he does that for is to demonstrate the capabilities of his machine. I don't know what uh, relief angle he put on there, or final edge, but it's razor sharp. This one is not D2. This is from their Carbon Steel Series 1095. And it's got the jeweling on the flats here. I call it bedazzling. <laughs> it's okay. I don't, I don't look at it and go, oh, I love that. It's okay. It's kind of traditional. It's kind of old school, western. Not full flat ground, as you can tell. You can see the grinder right there. That's a big blade, though. That's a 10-inch blade, not full tame, because it's using the stag once again. Right about here, you can see the pinning here, and it is epoxied. I wouldn't baton with this knife, either. It's not a wilderness blade. It is a collectible, probably a fighting knife, too. That is a comfortable handle, too. It's large. There's no cramping at all. I've always said this, I just have a soft spot for stag. I just love it. It's full of character. Look at how they fit and polish it too. It's just gorgeous. Here's the fitment on the guard. And the, I mean, do you see any gaps there? You know, compare this to some of the Chinese knives and you'll see that this just dominates it. 100% produced in the US. I love Bowie knives. I just love them. Uh, mainly second kind of cool for me. I said that when I reviewed the Bark River Bowie knives, right? And they will be much more expensive than this one. You know, you could debate all day long if they're better for realistic philosophies of use, but they're a lot more expensive. How about the weight, balance, and feel on each of them? This one is 18.2 ounces. 10 inch, 10.95, bedazzled. I looked on their website, by the way, and I didn't see this one. It is in their catalog. That's the one I was kind of pointing out to you when I was showing you the catalog. If you want it, bug them. Say, hey, we want that big Bowie knife. It is sick. It's the coolest silver stag knife they make. Says me. Especially after sharpened by Ben Dale. I think you have to pay for shipping and handling. Tell them nothing fancy project sent you. He'll probably get like 100 knives to sharpen for free. You'll like it. You'll want an Edge Pro Apex after that. And by the way, guy's been saying, hey, when are you going to do a sharpening video? Uh, I did it like four years ago. You need to search it out. I did one on the Edge Pro Apex and I did a hand sharpening way back in 2008 or 9. Been there, done it. 18.2 ounces. Uh, the Sharp Forest, that's this one, is a light 5.2 ounces. Very light in hand. And that's just the blade themselves, not with the sheath, in case you're wondering. The rest of these are going to run about 8.5 ounces. They're all lightweight, though, because they're not full tang. They're using natural antler materials. Each blank is water jet cut, Silver Stag will tell you, out of American D2 steel again. Not overheated with plasma cutting or something like that. 
hollow ground by hand, and then they go through a special multi-stage heat treatment. From my own cutting test, that of my buddies, uh, they're great. It, they're great blades. They hold an edge like crazy. As good as any other D2 I've seen in the project. KOA, Knives of Alaska, makes a great D2 steel, for instance, right? I love KOA blades. And there you see a repeating theme of serious hunting knives going to D2 for durability against hide, fur, flesh. That's why Silver Stag is using it. They hunt, they're just saying in their catalogs, they'll say on their website, this is a steel we like when we go out because we don't have to fool around sharpening our knives. I would agree with that. Each knife is an individual, once again. The stag they collect, they'll fit it per, you know, the tank, uh, per blade. I love that. The sheaths are okay. I'm not going to sit here and rave about the sheaths, but consider the price. Here we go with the Deep Valley sheath. I love the dark brown one. You know, but you're not going to see made in China on this, are you? No, you're going to see made in the U.S. of A on everything. 100% made. I, I kind of like that, especially at the price points, which we'll hit again. So, strap, no drainage, just traditional. It's good. If you And here's the other sheath, just real quick flyby. This is a pouch sheath for the that Sidekick Pro. And this one is for the Mountain Edge, similar to that. And then that big Bowie knife has this one. This is the one that comes with Bowie knife. Decent. I mean, it's a pouch, really high quality leather. It's nice. If you really wanted to amp it up, then pay the money. It's always money, right? It's always about money. Go to our friends at redhillsheaths.com. Use code nothing fancy. Love those guys. Here's a sheath right now that I had them make for me. This is a Swamp Rat Ratman Do previously reviewed. A whopping 14 ounces wearing a Red Hill Kydex naked cam, I think they call that. Great sheath. So you know, there's options out there. I like Red Hill. There's a lot of options. Quality and durability. Quality is tops on all these knives. I think I'm showing that accurately on this KRV. Current school KRV, not old school. That's how I do them all. No music, just the facts. Beautiful steel, beautiful fitment on all these. Durability is excellent if you use the knife as intended. I told you about the breakage story. Uh, incidentally, they replaced it rapidly, and when I sent it in, they didn't know who I was. I was just one of their customers. I said, hey, I broke this knife. I didn't get any harassment. What were you doing with the knife? How did it break on you? Were you misusing it? They just sent me a new one. So I guess that guarantee I showed you is pretty much honest. There you go. So I'm pretty impressed with that. If you're going to hard use the knife, hard use the knife, again, go with the slab series. Maybe the Deep Valley, go in that other one, something that would work for you. Value and cool factor are going to combine with a Silver Stag lineup and just take it to the next level. I mean, and we're not talking tactical blades. We're talking more outdoor blades, hunting knives, and collectability here. But where are you going to go out and spend, and each knife, each of these knives are, is going to run about, you know, 130, 150. This Bowie knife, I think, was under 200. It's been so long ago since we purchased it, I, I don't even remember. But, I mean, for that value, where else are you going to go? American made, and also antler for handle material, which I love. You know, some guys, well, I like wood. Dude, there's a lot of wood knives on the market, right? There are a dime a dozen. How many are you going to find in this? Like this. Uh, I still love those Anza knives, the Bark Rivers. They're excellent. KOA, loved it. But some of those are more modern designs, more modern materials. Do they have second kind of cool? Mm, depends. Depends. If you want individuality of your knife, maybe this is the way to go. Incidentally, you can provide them with your own stag, and they'll make a knife out of the stag you provide. So if you have a really cool horn material, send it to Silver Stag. Tell them what knife you want it fitted on, they'll do it. They can do group orders too. Laser engrave the antler, the stag themselves. Competitive options. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this. Uh, in fact, hardly any. Uh, here comes a really nice knife. This is called a Hunt's Point from SOG. This is more of a modern rendition of what I'm talking about. So it's got, it is obviously full tank. It's S30V steel, which is a great steel. It is flat ground. Has some jimping on it. It's a small skinning caping blade. 
it's excellent wood handle speak of the devil it's a great knife you know does it have the pride of ownership that that does you decide i don't know i love the knife i think it's cool uh and there's some others here's one of those ones coming out of the crate maybe never will review this one it might be the only airtime it ever gets the boker dozier anchorage skinner once upon a time i thought you guys would be interested in this stuff wrong os 8 steel it's a good knife sharp corners on it though but i'm showing it because it's representative of a lot of other skinning options out there so we got kind of a micarta handle here antler take your pick great job silver stag we'll exit with the wind blowing across the mountains for silver stag that's a nut and fancy review see ya But we're trying it. I mean, what if that's your only hunt knife you have and you need to make some firewood? And I wanted to see what that looked like under there anyhow. Now we know what the tang looks like. It's a little rat tang. That looks like that's real antler though. It is. Well, I mean, come on. Yeah. It's a hunting knife. Yeah. Corvettes also do terrible in the dirt. Well, well, <laughs> I guess we're done with that blade. The Gipper thanks you for trying. Send it back to Stag. Maybe they'll put a new handle on it for us. Not so much. Man, that mop was in there. They kind of have to make the tang that way too to fit the antler. Yeah. Dude. Here, I'm gonna step one in and hammer the tip. I'll hold it on this side. Hard, hit it hard. There we there go. go. Well, at least you have a cool blade you can mount on the front of your car. This will go right into the I'm going to do peg. it like Gladiator style on my wheels. Whether your little Mercedes-Benz logo inserts, just put this on like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Next. <laughs>